Lots of times in low price, low float stocks, you'll hear about short squeezes. You'll hear this a lot. But what makes a short squeeze? What do you look for? And how do you profit from these huge movers? Hey everyone, Lead Training with Stocks to Trade, Tim Bowen here. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. We put out a ton of videos. I want you to be notified immediately as soon as we drop one, so ring that bell. And then also, if you're looking to take that next step to take your trading to the next level, I love that you're here watching these videos. We put out a ton of stuff that I think really will help you, but Check out the Steady Trade team, twice daily webinars from me, Mike Huddy, Kim Curtin, Matt Monaco, a growing list of mentors out there that give you that shortcut to success. Talking about longs, talking about shorts, talking about options, talking about high price, low price, tons of stuff, different approaches. It's the best way out there to learn trading in the minimal, minimal amount of time. So, all right, let's talk about what is a short squeeze, what do we look for, and how do we profit from it. So, I've got the chart of Kodak up. This is kind of one of probably, oh, I hate to say the best, but one of the best examples of a short squeeze, and this happened back in July of 2020, and you can see the stock gapped up from four to eight, but what I want to talk to you about is where the real opportunity was on day two, okay? That's what's great about these setups is they're telegraphed, okay? The best short squeezes, the best supernova, because remember, many of you might be familiar with the supernova pattern. One of the reasons stocks go supernova is because short sellers add accelerant, okay? That's, that's always the best way I can think of it, and the best way I can explain it is, I mean, most of you understand, hopefully you understand what happens when you dump gasoline on a fire. Don't ever do that, by the way. <laughs> if you're trying to get a start, fire started, get some dry wood or something. Don't put gasoline on it, okay? Little tip, safety tip for you there. You don't want to burn your hair off, but looks like I burned most mine off, but that's just baldness. Anyway, um, so what you've got with any momentum stock. So Kodak had news. Um, they, they closed a loan with the federal government, they were pivoting into coronavirus type of vaccine uh, distribution, etc. So there was a catalyst, okay, number one. And but then what happens is when the shorts pile in, that catalyst is like the embers of the fire. The fire is burning, but when shorts come in, it's literally like dumping gasoline on the fire because then it just goes out of control. And that's how you get this four dollars to sixty dollars in two days because what happens is when these stocks start spiking wildly shorts are forced to panic buy okay and this is one of and this is why i want to do this video to explain this stuff many of you have probably been trapped long in a stock that morning panicked you know maybe one of these otc stocks that that typically you know, that they almost all morning panic at some point, which creates great dip buy opportunities. But maybe you've been in one of these OTCs, it's dropping 30, 40, 50%, and you start doing a market sell, which, you know, something I don't recommend. We do a lot of videos on order types, definitely check those out. But if you're doing that market sell, you know what happens. Invariably, almost invariably, you'll hit a market sell, you'll get a terrible fill below the bid, at the low of the day, and then the stock bounces, okay? I'm sure you've, if, you're, if you've never been there, I hope you've never been, never will be there. But if you're a jaded old trader like me, especially getting started, you make these bad decisions, it happens. So think about vice versa on the short side. When the stock is rapidly going up, shorts are going to panic, and they're going to panic buy. So they're going to put in market buys, and they're going to get a terrible fill way above the ask probably, and it's going to make the ask skip up. And then what happens is the shorts start tripping over each other as this stock rapidly spikes because they're all market buy, market buy, market buy. And I think what makes these the best setup on the short side, at the end of the day, if you're selling a morning panic, you're, you're getting out because you're like, oh, I can't believe I overnighted this stock. The thing with the long side is, 
If you're in a 10 cent OTC stock, let's use, use an example. The worst possible scenario is it goes to zero. It goes from 10 cents to zero and it stops, okay? Keep in mind, on the short side, if you short some 10 cent stock, it can go to 20 cents, which is 100% down, just like you'd be 100% down on the long side. But what happens when it goes to 15 or goes to 20 cents, okay? Again, we've seen these stocks go to a dollar, two dollars, three dollars in one day. Okay, so think about what's happening to shorts' mentality when they see these stocks rapidly skipping up. They're panicking, justifiably so. I mean, listen, I think you know, I talk about psychology a lot in the Steady Trade webinars. Kim Ann Curtin really focuses on psychology and emotions. But if you're short a stock like Kodak, you should be panicking. You should be getting out ASAP because what if you're stuck from four to 60? You're done. And you might even end up owing your broker money. It happens. Most brokers will margin you out, basically. They'll, they'll force buy you in before your stock goes below zero. But stocks like Kodak, sometimes there's not even enough liquidity for your broker to force you out. So you can literally end up owning owing a broker money if you get stuck in one of these. So I scared you. I warned you. How do we recognize one? Okay. So I'm going to jump to the intraday chart of Kodak. Going to focus on a couple days here back in July. Again, this was July 28th that this, or July 20, uh, yeah, 28th was the first day. So the news came out early in the day. We're, we're right here. Stock was trading at about three bucks. Gaps up into the 12 area, okay, 400% move. Most of you, if you're not familiar with what happens with these stocks, you'll think, I missed it. The great thing about this setup is there is, there, there's, when, when you get these multi-day moves with the ridiculous volume that we saw on Kodak, 4 to 12 is just getting started. Now, I want to be clear, you don't get one of these every day, okay, but we get about one every, a month or so. And I mean, if you can be ready, and I'm going to talk about day two, if you can be ready on day two, man, you can get over the PDT fast. You can grow your account fast. I mean, listen, if you got a hundred shares of Kodak at 12 bucks, and I mean, you're not going to sell the top, but let's say you sell it 30, 40, 50. Whew, that makes a big difference in your account. So anyway, I'm not going to focus on day one. Okay. Yes, it was a wild move. Yes, that's when the news hit. It was a good time to target it. But what we wanted to see, and let me zoom in on a different level here. I want to focus on specifically on day one. So what we got on day one is exactly what we like to see in that after that big initial spike, okay, here's our big initial spike at the market open, stock fades all day. This is exactly what we want to see because now what has happened, and this is dubious, okay? If you know the history of Kodak, you might be thinking Kodak, especially if you're my age. Yes, Kodak, the camera company, okay? They pivoted into cryptocurrencies a few years back, got destroyed after that. They now pivoted into virus plays, sketchy company, sketchy loan details. I mean, read, there's a lot of, uh, I won't get into the fundamentals too much, but this whole loan with the government, CEO is like donating money to weird charities. This thing is sketchy as heck, which is one of the biggest things we want to look for because the sketchier it is, the more biased shorts are going to be. So when we start seeing this all day fade, this is what I call collecting shorts because shorts are short in here, here, here here all the way through the day because they're like Kodak's a piece of crap, the loan sketchy, this company's sketchy, etc etc etc. So they're shorting for a good reason. But as it collects them, collects them, collects them, closes on the low of the day. Look at that, look at that low of the day close. That's the market close right there. Perfect example of that what I call collecting shorts. Now Let's fast forward to where the magic happens, okay? And this is what I want you to be looking for, is day two, 
Stock gaps up in after hours, holds in pre-market. The dark area is after hours. The light area is uh, pre-market. Then spikes at the open. And then we get this big pullback, okay? And I'll zoom. I can zoom in, but I want to kind of keep this zoomed out because that's that dip and rip that we look for, okay? Because that's that, that spike at the open, that pullback that gets the shorts to add in. Then what we look for is that high a day break right there, okay? And let me zoom in. I kind of want to keep it zoomed out because I want you to see the big picture of the idea, but I will zoom in to show you what I mean on that dip and rip right here. So if you're familiar with candles, you know this is what we refer to as a doji candle, particularly a gravestone doji. doji. That's that spike at the open, and I'm looking at 15 minute candles, which is what I like to look at for the dip and rip, because you know, you follow my videos, 945 is my favorite area. If you get that doji candle, the gravestone doji particularly, that first 15 minutes of the day, and then it re-breaks the high of the day, you've got a solid indicator. So you can see at 20, 250. Now, you might be saying, Tim, I got a small account. Stock's trading at 2250. Remember, my friends, it went to 60. Okay. You could have a hundred shares of this, and let's say you sell in minutes at 30, 35, 40. You're making ten dollars a share on a hundred shares with a small account, thousand bucks in minutes. That's how you grow your trade, your account. That's how you get over the PDT. So day two, we're looking for that first 15-minute gravestone doji. Then we're looking for that high day break post 9.45 p.m. or 9.45 a.m. Also, a whole dollar, half dollar cross. And that tells us that the squeeze is officially on. Because now, go back to my opening statement. Now the fire. The fire is lit. Okay? Look at the volume. Okay? This thing's trading 20 million. These are 15 minute candles again. This thing's trading 20 million shares every 15 minutes. It's skipping up. And the only reason this candle exists, because you're probably going to have a hard time selling into that candle. Another gravestone doji. But do you want to know why that candle has that wick? Look at that wick and look at the body. That entire wick is shorts, panicking, doing market buys, and they don't care what price they, they buy at because they see their account going to zero or possibly below zero. So that's what creates the amazing amount of opportunity. And as always, if you're trading these squeezes, you got to have realistic expectations, okay? I'm not saying you would have sold at 60, but maybe you sold at 45, okay? Maybe you sold at, hell, maybe, maybe you missed the Gravestone Doji and you, and you sold at 35, it's still 10 bucks a share plus. Then the stock, then the beauty of it continues to squeeze in the afternoon even. Almost reclaims the highs. So there was a 2 p.m. move on Kodak as well. So that's the biggest things to look for. The junkier the stock, the better. Ridiculous, unusual volume. Look for stocks that have failed in the past. Because Kodak is has a history of failing. This might seem counterintuitive, but that's why we love day two. Okay, you hear me talk about avoiding one and done charts all the time. Kodak is a one and done, but on day two, squeeze initiated, volumes there, breaks the high of the day, does the dip and rip, does a VWAP hold in the afternoon. I mean, there's so many ways to trade these. And yes, there isn't one every day, but when you catch one, and if you catch three of these a year, let's say you're ready, you're prepared, you know what to look for, you focus on day two, day three, and all of a sudden, you got three or four trades a year that may have put you over the PDT. Let's say you started with five grand, and all of a sudden, you nail three or four of these. In three or four trades, you might be over the PDT. That's the power of these. And they repeat, they repeat, they repeat. We get, especially since 2016. Ever since 2016, it's been the era of the short squeeze. BPTH is one. I mean, there's just, I could go on and on, dries. I mean, there's so many of these things that went supernova and that is the best way to grow your account.
So, all right, everyone. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I really enjoy kind of breaking out the whiteboard and making the, you know, making the diagrams to focus on the points. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Have you traded one of these short squeezes? Um, have you recognized these? And conversely, I won't pick on you, but I'm curious. Have you ever been trapped in a short squeeze? And, and have you done that panic buying only to see the stock rapidly reverse? I mean, maybe, who knows? Maybe you bought the top at 60 on Kodak, you got panicked out, and then it dropped 30 bucks a share. So let me know. I'm always looking to learn from all of you. And again, check out all of our archive of videos. Talk about all of these patterns. If I drop terms, okay? So if you hear me dropping jargon, check out the archive because there's probably a video or multiple videos talking about the jargon. And as always, check out the Steady Trade team. I would love to work with you. It's a small group. It's a great group. We all focus on being professional, business-like. I show up and chat every single day at 6 a.m., every day at 6 a.m. to work with the team. I look forward to seeing you on the Steady Trade team webinars at 6 a.m. So have a great day.